All players, please take one case each from the table at the front of your line. Take a moment to open the case and check the content. The shape you have chosen is a shape you must remove from the honeycomb without cracking it. I'm dead. Please. No. Please. Don't do it. Coming up on this episode of Aftershock. Clara tells us the origin of pumpkin carving. Alessia has her friends guess different chip flavors. And Morgan catches us up on all things sports. What's up, Cypress Bay? I'm Michael Orlando. I'm Kimberly Blum, and Aftershock starts now. know that American football can carry some stereotypes. Yeah, typically society views it as a male sport. Here's Cyberspace's first female to defy those stereotypes. Hi, my name is Maddie Brass. I'm 18 years old and I am the first girl on the Cyberspace boys varsity football team. I've started playing flag football since sixth grade, and tackle football, this is my first year playing. So Coach Casulo um, is our head coach, and last year he came to one of my flag football games, and I was the punter. That was a really good kick. And he recruited me through that, and he's like, we don't have a kicker this year, would you want to kick? So I said, I mean, sure. Touch your toes, touch your toes, we're ready! Ready! We're ready! 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 Being a girl on the varsity team, I was intimidated at first. I, I mean, who wouldn't be, honestly? Seeing, walking into summer practice with all the guys looking at you, not not the best. It was. I was like, okay, wait, should I turn around right now? This may not. This may not be a good idea. At first, like I said, some of them not were not me. They were just, you know, why is a girl on the team? Is it like obstructing your masculinity? Like I don't know, but um, they're all they're all really nice to me. They would have my back in literally any situation and I appreciate them all so so much. I've kicked an extra point and it was the first time in Cypress Bay history that a girl has kicked an extra point in the Cooper City high school game and like even though it's just an extra point it's still like just a start of such a big journey. What's up Cypress Bay? Today I'm going to be putting my friends taste buds to the true test as they try to guess strange chip flavors. Whoever is able to guess the most correctly wins. I know what these are. They're definitely like cinnamon or something sweet. No, those, all, those apple things. Apple crisp? Oh, I just fit everywhere. <laughs> apple crisp, like with cinnamon. Oh. They're like the Starbucks drink. They're like the cereal too. <laughs> like the off-brand veggie straws, but apple flavor. Like, you know what I'm saying? And definitely cinnamon too. Like apple crisp cinnamon, like apple pie. Just apple. Pie. No, no, okay. It feels like cinnamon's part of apple. Kim was correct with cinnamon. They're not apple at all. Oh, I can't put There's them no on. apple in here. No. You're kidding. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's gone vinegar. Mm -hmm. it's gone I vinegar. just smell. No, they're not gone vinegar. Oh. <laughs> Wait, they're different. Wait, shut up. No. They're, gi they're giving me salt and vinegar, but they're like giving me something else. There's like me, no vinegar. They're like giving me acid. Yeah. Salt and vinegar. Salt and vinegar. I tried the wrong though. Right. Oh, okay. It was dill pickle. <laughs> Like, Wait, why are they good? <laughs> I know my help. I know my jalapeno when I see them. Oh, I'm not jalapeno. They're a truffle. They're a truffle. Wait, there's... Huh? I'm getting five different flavors in here. I didn't taste anything. 
and jalapeno. I don't know. I'm gonna go with chili flavored chips. The correct answer was jalapeno. I know my jalapeno went <laughs> Between you and me, the chips didn't seem that bad, but we can agree to disagree. Alessio Levian, CB TV. Big Brother's one of the longest running shows of all time. But on many of these reality shows, the casting process is pretty flawed. Here's Alex to show us how CBS took a step in the right direction. CBS's Big Brother is a reality show that has been around for decades and has crowned decades of winners. Congratulations, Steve! Congratulations, Nicole! Congratulations, Casey! Congratulations, Cody! And one thing ties all of these winners together. They all look the same, except for one. Congratulations, Xavier. You are the winner of Big Brother. On Wednesday, September 29th, Big Brother officially crowned its first African-American winner of the series. The first in a total of 23 seasons. A large thanks for this incredible accomplishment is given to a CBS policy enacted in November of last year. So some of the major networks, including CBS, have enacted a new policy that 50% of the cast and crews of these major network shows need to be people of color. This policy, although made quite a while back, had its first application in the Big Brother 23 cast and crew. Prior to this policy being enacted, POC representation was scarce, especially on Big Brother. But before the policy was made um, throughout the first few seasons, uh, I kept seeing this like kind of trend of people who are of color being kicked out first. I think there should be more representation for, for us. Um, and the fact that they're trying to at least incorporate that into their production is, is phenomenal. By seeing a face like his drive to new heights, watchers like Sebastian are able to be inspired by those on the big screen. I get to see uh, more of my people, my niche in that, in that field. I think it's definitely uh, allowed me to, to uh, be more confident in my abilities and, and know that I'm being represented well within the community. As CBS is making a difference in the lives of its viewers, it is challenging other networks to perform the same. When one of the primary companies enacts a policy like this, the others will certainly take note. Uh, certainly when it's a, a social policy such as this one, it probably wouldn't be long until the other major networks fall in line. CBS's policy is the spearhead for an era of correct media representation. Alex Land, CB TV. With Halloween coming up, it's fun to partake in traditions such as pumpkin carving. I mean, we've been doing it for years now, but why exactly did we start cutting into orange vegetables and how did it become an American tradition? Well, it all dates back to the 1800s and was a tradition actually started by Irish Americans. In fact, the term jack-o'-lantern comes from an old Irish tale. In the story, a man named Jack was an evil spirit that scared many. Therefore, people began carving out vegetables to place outside their homes. These vegetables were believed to deter Jack and light the way for good spirits. However, those vegetables were usually turnips. It wasn't until Irish immigrants came to America and they saw how well pumpkins grew in the US. They were perfect for carving and quickly became the ideal vegetable to place outside your home. As the years passed, Americans have adopted this and turned it into a fun activity to do during October. Now that you're caught up on the history, pumpkin carving will be that much more fun. I'm Claire DeLuca, CB TV. Hey, how'd you do on your pre-calc test? Don't even mention it. Bad grade? Yeah. Well, you're in luck. Here's Bianca with some information on Mal's math tutoring. In a poll of 5,000 students, many would probably say that math is their least favorite subject. All of the numbers just don't seem to add up. For these students, however, they see these strings of digits from a different angle. Mu Alpha Theta, or Mao, has been a staple of student life for those who enjoy the rigors of an academic club. But to the members, it's much more than that. Honestly, if it's something you actually enjoy, you want to join it because just as you'll join any other club, if I like really like math or I like learning about math, I'm going to join math club because you're going to find people that are just like you. Mao has found a way through all 120 of its members to provide an incredible environment not only for the student body, but also for those with a passion for numbers. And this year, they're doing it in a bigger way than ever. Um, so last year we didn't actually get to do like the tutoring, 
that we do right now. Um, so I feel like that, like, it wasn't just a thing that kind of was traumatic to us, but it was also to like the kids who need the help. So we didn't get to do tutoring, which was like a pretty big downfall. Um, but now we're back up again with it. So. I, I really like tutoring and helping people. Uh, I'm in uh, a lot of the service hour clubs and uh, help people, and it, it's helping people is really enjoyable. There are people really struggling, and if I can help someone get even a B over a C or on one assignment, it's it's definitely worth it to me. Whether they're there one day a week or five, these students always strive to better themselves and make math a more positive experience for everyone around them. Bianca Jaramillo, CB TV. Are you okay? Don't be sad. Today's a happy day. Hey! Oh, oh, are, are you, you crying? crying? Why, Why are you sad? sad? It's, it's okay. okay. It, it'll, it'll be okay. okay. It'll, it'll be okay. okay. Don't, Don't worry. worry. Here's Morgan of this week's sports. What's up, Cypress Bay? I'm Morgan Haggett, and just last week we finally faced off against our rival team, the Western Wildcats, on the football field. Here's Mia with the recap. What's up, guys? I'm Mia Batista, and this past Friday, Cypress played one of the biggest games of the season with the headlighting rivals, Western High School. This game was full of action from both sides, with some plays coming from Noah Solomon, number five, a lot of running plays from number two, Malcolm Gordon, and pass deflections from number three, Armani Marshall. However, with the effort from the Bay, we just couldn't defeat the Western Wildcats with a score of 36 to three. Despite that loss, our school spirit still reigns over the Western Wildcats. Even though we didn't come up on top on this game, we could still look forward to our next home game on October 22nd against Coral Glades High School. Amia Batista, CB TV. That's all for this week's Lightning Athletics. I'm Morgan Haggett, CB TV Sports. Quick, Kim. Give me two truths and one lie. The sky's blue, the grass is green, and we're pretty good friends. Wait, but the sky is blue. Funny. Here's Alex with this week's Man the Street. What's up, Cypress Bay? My name is Alex Suge, and today I'm going to be asking you guys to play two truths and a lie. First one is, one day on Venus is longer than one year on Earth. Second one is, one of Saturn's rings is made out of pure silver dust. And the last one is, there are more trees on Earth than there are stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Which is a lie? I think the first one. The first one. The one with the trees. Yeah, I'm going with the one with the trees. Yeah. How did all of you get it wrong? I think it's the Venus one because Venus is closer to the sun. So I assume it revolves around the sun faster. But I could be wrong. I'm just going to go with the Venus one. Did you ask me about days or years? The second one? Yeah, you got it. Yeah. First statement is, Elton John wrote the jingle for Nationwide Insurance. Second one is, Michael Jackson wrote the music for Sonic 3. And the last one is, David Bowie launched an internet provider called BowieNet, which is a lie. I really don't know this one, but I'm going to go with the Sonic one. The Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. David Bowie. I'm going with Michael Jackson. Again, all of you got it wrong. What? The, the lie is actually Elton John writing the music for Nationwide Insurance. Yeah, I was like, the timeline doesn't really match up now, does it? The sound of doors opening in Star Trek was made with the sound of flushing toilets. Second one is, Oscar winners used to be announced before the actual ceremony. And the last one is, Avatar is the highest grossing film of all time. The first one. First. Avatar. I'm going with the first one. It's the Avatar one. I think it was Endgame that surpassed it, right? I was very scared, but at least he got it right. No, no, okay, no, now you got it wrong again. Looks like you guys need to brush up on your trivia. I'm Alex Suke, CB TV. That's all for this week's episode of Aftershock. If you'd like to check out our previous episodes, make sure to check out our YouTube channel at Cyberspace CV TV and follow us on all of our social medias. I'm Michael Orlando. I'm Kimberly Blum. Thanks for watching.